Car Motivator followers. This is Sean Kelly, the Car Biz Coach, helping automotive leaders achieve great results through their people and technology. The reason for this video is because my company, Car Motivators, we coach dealer principals across the country, senior leaders and sales managers. And what we find is that managers are often frustrated every day. They come to work, they, they have so much on their plate, they're bombarded 75 different ways as soon as they hit the showroom floor or their office. And they go home at the end of the day feeling frustrated that they often can't get it all done. In fact, this is a time management plan from one of my dealers who happens to own about five stores. And he has over 21 hours a day worth of activities that he needs to do to really get the job done. It's no wonder that we go home frustrated feeling like we we can't, we can never get it all. We can never catch up. So what I want to do in this video is help you guys by sharing some practical and tactical ways that you can really get everything done and go home knowing that all the right things are taking place at your store. Watch this video and let me show you some ways that you can get better control of your day. To keep this video to a reasonable time frame, I've only taken inventory of five common activities that most desk managers do throughout the day. So here we have a desk manager that wants to coach salespeople. He wants to print and sign ROs, or excuse me, POs, purchase orders. He wants to eat lunch. How dare he have a lunch break? He wants to do a CRM lead inspection of his internet leads, and he wants to desk deals. Once we've created our activity inventory, now it's important to understand the vision, what it is we're trying to um, accomplish in doing these activities. That's the only way we can rate our activities to determine if they're profitable action or not. So for the sake of this desk manager, let's say he wants to be the number one dealership in the region. That's his vision of success. So now we need to look at these, these activities and find out which of these will help them help him be um, the number one manager in the region. Okay. The number one dealership in the region. Let's go ahead and rate that on a scale of one to five. All right, to be the number one um, dealership in the region, you're probably gonna need to do some coaching with your salespeople. Let's go ahead and give that one a five. All right, next, to print and sign POs. Well, that's important, it's an administrative activity, um, but definitely something that is low priority. That alone is not going to help accomplish the vision. So let's give that a one, All right? Eating lunch, well, you've gotta eat lunch to live, but at the end of the day, does it produce that vision? Well, you gotta be alive to produce the vision, but let's go ahead and give that activity a three. I know managers skip lunch all the time and just binge eat at the end of the day when they get home from their dealership. At least the ones I start coaching often do that. We fix that. Um, next, we have CRM lead inspection. Also a critical activity that would help produce that vision for success, being number one in the region. So let's go ahead and give that one a four. Next, we're gonna look at desking deals. Now desking deals, obviously extremely critical. Um, if we don't work the deals, we can't sell cars. And at the end of the day, we can't reach our vision. So that one will get a five. Now that we've rated each of these, we know the most profitable action, coaching salespeople, desking deals, CRM lead inspection, followed by eating lunch and printing and signing. Deals. Now we need to look at how long each activity takes. How long does the manager want to spend each time doing each activity? So let's say he's got four salespeople to coach and he wants to spend 30 minutes doing it. That would be a total of two hours, obviously. Printing and signing um, POs, let's say that activity takes him one hour per day. Eating lunch, um, let's say he spends 30 minutes a day doing that, okay? And CRM lead inspection, let's say that takes one hour. And finally, desking deals, because of all the CRM lead inspections, well, that's gonna take some time. So let's say, say we spend uh, 1.5 hours on that, all right? So let's go ahead and add up the time here and see what we've got. We've got two hours, four hours, five hours, six hours. So we have a total here of six hours of activities that need to be accomplished. Now, here's the problem. This manager only wants to work four hours a day. How are we gonna get that All done? All of a sudden, uh, a new car truck shows up to drop off a bunch of our new cars, and that's gonna be 45 minutes. And of course, we can't control or know when our shipping and transportation is happening. So that's a challenge. Um, an angry customer randomly comes in and that's going to take 45 minutes to get them calmed down and happy. And then we've got the owner decides to drop by and have an impromptu meeting. Awesome. Then our wife calls and we got to spend 15 minutes talking about uh, how we, who's going to pick up the kids over the weekend. And then finally, um, our vendors, they just decide to randomly stop by. So now we just added three hours and 45 minutes back to our schedule. Again, let's look at our vision and reprioritize this random stuff and figure out what's going on here.
So the new car truck, obviously administrative thing. Um, is it going to help us move to our vision of success? Well, at the end of the day, not really, because that's nothing that's going to help us become the number one dealer. Um, so that's an administrative, low priority administrative thing, similar to signing POs. Um, then we have our angry customer. Well, we've got to make our customers happy. Um, we can, if, a lot of times you can take a happy or an angry customer, make them so happy they give you referrals. So let's go ahead and uh, put a three on that one. It's pretty important to deal with, obviously. Um, owner drops in. Um, well, depending on the meeting, it could be important. But for the most part, if it's impromptu and wasn't planned, um, let's go ahead and give that one a three as well. Our wife calls. Well, for a vision for success, um, let's give it a, I think our wife's probably the most important thing in our in our day. So let's go ahead and give that one a four because if we get a divorce, it's going to be hard to create this vision of success. Finally, our vendors stopping in randomly. Well, I'm going to go ahead and give that one a two. Sometimes they have something useful to say, but if they're just dropping in again with an impromptu meeting, it's probably not that important. So when you look at these things in order of priority and you compare them to the other list, these are relatively low compared to the coaching of your salespeople, the CRM lead inspection and desking deals, um, the things that are high value, high profitable action. Let's look at our resources and see what we can do here. Let's say we have resources. We have eight salespeople, total salespeople on the floor. We have one receptionist and we have one finance manager. All right. So we need to free up about two hours. We're going to go ahead and take two of the salesperson one on one coaching conversations and delegate those out to our finance manager. That will make this two hour block. That will bring it down to one hour, obviously. We're going to have uh, printing and signing POs. Well, we're going to go ahead and have our receptionist print the POs for us. And then we're going to look them over and sign off on them. That'll bring this down to, let's just say, 15 minutes from one hour. All right. Next, we're going to go ahead and take one of our 30 minute coaching conversations and do that with our salesperson. And we're going to eat lunch together. So that go ahead, that will go ahead and take this one down to 30 minutes. All right. So we're still getting all these things done. We're just doing it in a more, I guess you could say, efficient and effective way. Next, we're going to go ahead and do our CRM lead inspection. Um, you know what? Here's how we're going to do that. Our salespeople, when they come to the one-on-ones, they're going to print us a, an internet lead that they went ahead and marked as dead deal that they didn't think they could sell and they didn't do very well with. They're going to bring us one of those and then they're going to bring us one they sold that they did well with. And we're going to bake, we're going to bake that into our, our one-on-one -on -one coaching conversations. So that just freed up another hour. And this becomes CRM lead inspection is still going to happen, but we've eliminated the extra time it takes. Okay. Also, let's go ahead and delegate out 30 minutes. Um, let's go ahead and delegate out 30 minutes of our desking deals to our finance manager. So that'll bring that down to one hour. All right. So we went from six hours of activities down to, let's see here, one hour to two hours and 15 minutes. So for this one, I, let's look back at our resources, right? We have salespeople, we have a finance manager, we have a receptionist. So we can have our receptionist. So let's go ahead and delegate this one out. Okay. And let's go ahead and let's, you know what, let's empower our salespeople to handle the customer concerns and challenges. So let's delegate this out to our salesperson and maybe our finance manager backs them up. Um, and then let's say our owner drops in here and we go ahead and we deal with that one. So we're going to go ahead and have that meeting. Um, our wife calls, we're going to go ahead and have that one. Um, and then the vendor's stopping. And let's say we tell our vendors, hey vendor, um, I'm happy with you coming by, but it didn't fit into my schedule today. So moving forward, let's go ahead and carve these meetings out on the calendar and let's set aside maybe you know, 15 to 20 minutes for each of these meetings moving forward, unless there's something more important. So let's say we're able to delete this all together um, and make it, instead of having it be an unplanned activity, let's say we can turn that into a planned activity. Okay, my friends, so what we've done here, we have taken all of the planned activities. We've taken all the unplanned activities, which we're telling for nine hours and 45 minutes of things to do. And we have delegated, we've deferred, and we've deleted some. And we've also combined others to make yourself more efficient and effective, all right? Now, I've rewritten the list here and I've prioritized everything. I've put everything in order of priority that we said earlier. So first we have desking deals. Next we have coaching, lunch, and CRM, both, both totaling an hour each. Then we have our wife call 15 minutes, which could be moved around. We also have our owner meeting and then we have our signing of POs. Now, it's really important to understand something. All these activities, okay, have now been condensed down to three and a half hours of work. 
three and a half hours, and we're still getting everything done that we planned on, and, and then some, right? But what are we going to do with the extra 30 minutes? Are we just going to, um, you know, are we going to stop at three and a half hours? Well, no, we're planning for a four hour day. So we'll, let's go ahead and account for random things, okay? Randomness is going to happen, just like we demonstrated earlier. So we need to account for it into our routine. It needs to be part of our schedule each and every day. As a general sales manager of the top Hyundai store in my region, I found that I had three and a half hours of randomness a day that had to be built, baked into my routine. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is go ahead and bake in a certain amount of time. In this case, it's one eighth of this manager's day. He's baking in 30 minutes of randomness and now we're working four hours a day, all right? We're getting everything done, we're delegating it out, we're empowering our people and we're doing things in the order, consistently doing them in the order of importance that's gonna help us reach our, there it is, vision of success, becoming the number one dealer in the region. Okay, Car Motivator followers, we went ahead and we took an activity inventory. We listed how long each and every activity took and we took nine hours, nine hours and 45 minutes, some planned activities, some unplanned activities, and we were able to do, figure out what we were gonna do based on a priority. Is it moving us towards our vision or not? We rated those activities to see if they're profitable action or not. Then we were able to de delete, defer, and delegate out many other things, which brought our schedule all the way down to three and a half hours a day. We went ahead and we added 30 minutes back in to handle the randomness and the unplanned events that are gonna always occur no matter what. We're gonna make sure we factor that into our day each and every day. But I'm gonna leave you with a few last tips when it comes to getting it all done. And hopefully this will make a huge impact on your career and your life, okay? So number one, the first thing you should do when you get to work is not check your email, listen to your voicemails and respond to those things. You need to plan your day. That's the first thing you need to do. It only takes 10 or 15 minutes and it can make a huge impact in getting it all done. Number two, you need to go ahead and Schedule in your routine, okay? Schedule in your routine to routinely inspect your routine and change it and upgrade it. Um, I do it quarterly whether I want to or not. I literally go through my routine and I figure out which things are not profitable action that I'm continuing to do that I need to delete and which things are profitable action that I need to do more of. I'm always reprioritizing and revisiting that. Um, number three, make sure you're separating your routine behaviors from your one-off tasks. Those things need to be kept in two separate buckets and monitored and measured in two separate ways, all right? Finally, and this is the most important, okay? I don't care how good you get at getting it all done and planning your day and, and organizing, and coordinating and becoming more effective and efficient. I don't care how good you get at it, you're gonna screw it up. And when you do, forgive yourself. You're only human. Heck, a couple weeks back, I got 20% of my planned day accomplished. You know what, that's okay. Back on the saddle tomorrow, I'll do better. The next day I got 150% done and I was really excited, all right? So listen guys, all the things I've shared with you today, um, I mean, we're talking, you're not gonna master it from watching one video or reading one book on time management. This takes years of practice and, and, and consistent discipline. I'm here for you if you need any time management coaching, if you feel just overwhelmed, stressed out, if you feel like you can't get it all done, reach out to me, I'm happy to help, all right? This is Sean Kelly, the Carbiz Coach, helping automotive leaders achieve great results through people and technology. Have a great day.